Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. We are live. Good to see you all. Um, I already see some people coming in. So, hi, Patricia. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Femke. Hi, I think that's Els. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, hi, Susan. Hi, Carla. Hi, Connie. Linda is here as well. Marga. Hello. Hi, Linda. Happy Easter to you too, Linda. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Welcome to the Elizabeth Craft Designs page. I'm doing the live tonight. Um, so it's, uh, I'm happy to be here. It's a uh, good Friday. So it's a happy Friday today. Um, hi, everybody. Oh, you're streaming in. Hi, Ans. Hi, Manuela. Hi, Rhonda. If I forget to say hi to you, welcome. Uh, it's good to see you all. And it's happy. I'm happy to be here tonight. Spending this Friday evening, well, not the whole evening, uh, but the next hour with you, having some fun. Um, before we get started, hi Janice, welcome from Sir Stampelot. Hi Wilma, Anya, hi Rick. Oh, it's a busy night tonight. Good to see you all. Um, good. Um, before we start, like, share and comment to win the gift certificate. It's important and it's a lot of money you can win. So do that. It's, uh, it's, it's really nice. And, um, also don't forget that this weekend is 20% off of all of your sets, uh, uh, dice. And that is fun. I'm going to use some tonight as well, but they are brilliant. Uh, so take advantage of that. Hi, Johan. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Honora. Well, um, it's busy. It's getting full. Um, I hope I can actually, uh, uh, follow all your comments, but, um, uh, I'll do my best, but forgive me if I, uh, for miss some of the comments because yeah, well, <laughs> that's, uh, it's, it's quite hard to keep up with all the comments and to do some crafting because that's what we're going to do. Let's switch to my workstation, shall we? It's already two minutes past eight and I'm going to do a lot. Anita, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be using some of your sets dice and I'm going to be using some of your dice as well. So um, that's going to be fun. Um, got a funny story about that as well. So hi, Saskia. Hi, Sue. Hi, Esmeralda. Hi, hi, everybody. Good. Shall we get started? Because uh, I'm all geared up um, and it's, uh, uh, it's a fun evening. So let's go and dive into my workstation. I can still see you. You can still see me. Small, but that's good. It's always better. Um, but in front of me, you see some dice that I'm going to be using tonight. So um, I'm going to start by making some beautiful flowers. And now this is the Floral 16. I love this set. It's the huge flower, uh, five petals. I love this set. Um, but there is a funny story with this, because when I was preparing for tonight's live, I was die cutting out some bits and bobs. And then I've lost the little die from the stamens. Now, trust me, we've looked everywhere. It's gone. So what I did, especially for tonight, I bought another set uh, because I wanted to make the stamens matching with the set. So that's what I did. Ordered a new set. It got in on time. So I've got the correct stamens to go with it. So that's what we're going to use. Then... I'm going to use the Easter eggs and some flowers from this set. So I'm not going to use the whole set, uh, but that's the fun thing I think about uh, Elizabeth Craft Designs uh, dies. You can mix and match everything. And so in this case, I'm going to use all these little elements from this set. I've cut out some text using the Planner Essentials 1741, the Planner Essentials 23, that's the alphabet trio, and I'm using the small letters for that. Uh, I will show you what I've done with that. And then the star of the show is going to be, let me put this away, um, this beautiful book set. And I'm, I've seen so many gorgeous, gorgeous makes with this already. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I've looked everywhere, Anita, didn't find it. Um, Oh yeah, I've gone over to the cute side. That's, uh, um, definitely, uh, I can't go back. <laughs> I'm over the bridge. Um, so I'm going to, going to use this beautiful die set and of course do it my way, but we're going to make something fun. What am I going to make tonight? Which, uh, is, is good to know. Easter is coming up and I'm going to uh, have an Easter dinner with my mom and her husband and I'm going to make an Easter menu. I'm going to make the menu and put the menu into this 
book box. And that will be on their Easter eggs. I've got some Easter eggs here that I'm going to put in there as well. It's going to be fun. It's not going to be rocket science, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Penny, I'll probably find the one I've lost now because I've got the new one in. Never mind, I've got the new one, so that's good. Um, so yeah, that book is fantastic. I'm going to use some uh, specific paper. I need that. Don't lose it. Um, I'm going to use some specific paper, and I'm not sure you can see, but I'll get it out. Let me see what's going on. I see someone has a black screen. Let me see, are we still on? I think we are gone. Are we now gone or are we back? On my iPad, I can see myself. Now it's gone. How is this possible? Is it okay now, Jen? Hello, hello, hello. Are we there or are we gone? I'm looking at Daniel. Okay, apparently I'm back. I think that's what you guys are saying. Um, I think... Okay, we're back. There was a glitch in the internet. I don't know. The internet was still working, but uh, uh, in the live stream, something hicked up. Okay, where was I? Um, Okay, now, good. Now, what I'm going to be using, let's move on, is this uh, paper from Ranger. Um, it's a uh, leather paper. It's, it's called, what is it called? It has a name, doesn't it? Oh, here it is. It's called Distress Cracked Leather Cardstock. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, it's, it has a leather, leather structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, use sprays on that. So let me get my splatter box out. Make sure that's in frame. And I'm gonna color this page. Thank you guys, I'm, uh, I, I'm back. I don't know what happened. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use several colors of Distress Sprays. I'm gonna use Mica Stain, I'm going to use Victorian Velvet and I'm going to use Kitsch Flamingo. So uh, let me shake these up. I will do that under the table because it's uh, going to be noisy otherwise. Good. Happy to be back. Yeah, I can read you guys. Good, 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 good. Yes, there is a sale for the weekend. Uh, there's 20% discount of all of your set's dice. So all the fun little critters and uh, yeah, that's nice. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use the Distress Oxide Sprays and I'm going to color my paper. And I'm just spraying that on there. No rhyme or reason. 
and I'm gonna mix the two um, sorry the two together so this is a, a normal spray stain and this is the oxide spray um, yeah guys I can read you but there's a big delay always on Facebook so that's I'm mixing those two together and that gives a nice effect gives it more depth um, and then finally I'm coming in with the spray the mica spray hi Candace now this is something that I I do more more often I love to play with the sprays and make my own sort of paper um, and especially now with this leathery look that's really uh, fun right let's spray some water on and then I'm going to dry it well it's really fun this paper um, I am waiting for the new uh, Tim Holtz release to come to the Netherlands because it's not there yet um, because there's apparently an um, embossing folder in there uh, with also a leather uh, look however you can't use that for this die because it's quite big And you need like an A4 size paper to um, be able to make the die. But that doesn't mean I don't want to have the other paper, the other embossing folder. I'm a sucker for embossing folders. What I have in a spray box, it's just kitchen towel, just a coke roll. And the paper is the leather uh, paper. And uh, let me see, I want to give it a bit more of the mica. Because I like sparkle and shine. And then give it some spray again. And this spray, I don't know if you can see it on the image, but if you spray it with water, what happens? Obviously, this paper isn't flat. It's uh, it got hills and uh, valleys in it, so to say. So what happens is that the mica is more heavy. That seeks into the valleys of the paper. So... Yeah, Femke, it's, it's kokerol. So I think this is fine. Yeah, so I'll just finish drying this. But I don't know if you can see it, but it's a really cool effect with the mica um, shining in all these cracks from the leather. And that's something I really like. So I'm quickly drying this. Now, I like that saying, it's like watching paint dry. This is literally what we're doing now, watching paint dry, or ink in this case. But I'm just dabbing off some of the excess um, because there's color enough on underneath. So that just helps to speed things up a bit. Hi, Vilma. Good to see you. Yeah, Femke, I'm going to cut out the bookcase out of... And why am I putting my box away? I'm sorry. <laughs> I need that back. Um, I'm going to cut out the, the bookcase. So it's going to be a leather book. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you. Yeah, 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 the dryer is fine. There's a weird sound in it, but it's working fine. There's a bit of a rattle in it, but... Okay, so I like this, but... There's always a butt with me. Um, I want a bit more shine on it. I want it to have more definition. I want these different layers to all come to... Uh, oh, that's good, Carol. Um, I want a bit more of this layering that we put on there, the different colors. I want that to be more vis visible. So I'm going to 
grab my box back. I'm going to put this on. And then I've got a product here that's called Distress Resist Spray. Now, when I spray it over this, it will really bring up the shine of the mica and the depth of the colors. Pay, some attack, pay a close look, and then you will see the magic happening. Hi, Jennifer. There we go. Just thin layer. And then you can already see the different layers coming. And this is sort of a plastic layer that you put on there, but it's fun. Can you see it? That it's bringing out the depth of the uh, colors more. It's really cool. So this needs to dry for a minute. I can heat set this, but I've got something else to do anyways. So I will put this to the side because I'm going to work with some paper flowers as well. And that is going to be, as I said, the flowers 16. Um, but before I do that, I need to get my, I thought I had everything ready. There we go. I've got a piece of release sheet here and I've got this beautiful pink, shiny, sparkly, uh, metallic paper from Tim Holtz. I love that paper, but I'm going to do something to it. And it's funny because I saw Annette Green, you would all know Annette Green, do this the other day as well. Uh, using metallic paper um, and um, uh, changing that with alcohol ink. Um, no, there's no gray on there. It's it's a bit, um, how do you call that? The silver sparkle, I think you see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two colors of alcohol ink, rust and um, what's this called? Sunshine yellow. Good that you liked, commented, and shared, because then you can win that beautiful prize. So I'm gonna just gonna put two, three drops on here. And then I'm just gonna dab that on this paper. And to get a bit more effect going, I'm going to use the alcohol blending solution and put that on here as well. I want a bit of a weathered look to this. Next, I'm going to take my uh, rust color. I am, well, th those are the two brands that I absolutely love the most. I love Elizabeth Craft Designs, and uh, not just because I'm in the design team, because I've loved, it, be loved them before I started there. Uh, and I love Tim Holtz. And those are my two, two of my favorite brands combined. And yeah, this is what I do. I love grunging stuff up, etc. but I do love um, Elizabeth Craft Designs. Just a bit of that rust on there, just to create a bit of a fun texture. We're gonna die cut out of this, but there we go. That's fine, put this to the side, put this away. Doesn't have to be more, but this gives it a really nice effect. Clean up the nozzle, that's a very good point. There we go. Thank you for the tip. Put this to the side, don't need that for now. Do I? No. Mm, yes, I do. Just have to clean it up a bit. Alcohol will clean that off. Oh, thanks, Patricia. There we go. That's better right off then i'm going to show you how i color my flowers so i've got a flower here beautiful flower well done anita i love it love it love it um and i'm going to start by um 
taking a finger dubber and taking Victorian Velvet in Distress Oxide. And I'm going to start in the middle. And bringing that out, leaving a bit of white exposed. Just dabbing it on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nature is not perfect. Oh, that would definitely work, but I don't have that yet. I'm waiting for that. It's on my list. Oh, hi, Belinda, by the way. I missed you. So, now, one thing I have to say. Um, I'm using the Elizabeth Craft Design Soft Finish cardstock for this, and I love how that is taking the ink. Uh, I think, for me, I like inking it up with the normal Distress inks, but Distress Oxides and this paper, ah, it gives it such a great, nice, soft finish. So, yeah, really soft finish cardstock. Duh. Um, but, yeah. So I like this, leaving some white exposed. And then I'm coming in with another color, which is Seedless Preserves. Thanks, Els. So that's in the middle. I'm just dabbing that darker purple and bringing it in. This is how I do it. And I'm not saying it's the right way, um, but this is what I found that works best for me. So I'm just dabbing it on. And once that is on there, I'm going to take my seedless preserves again, of a Victorian velvet again, and just dab over that. And that will blend these two together perfectly. Oh yeah, I think Mario, Mario is hilarious. Um, I've been trying to get Daniel to do the same that Dan that Mario does, but he's not taking the bite. Oh well. Um, so there we go. That's my flower done. And then I'm going to take my famous missing hmm. stamens, and I need. Let me think. Four. So I'm going to quickly make four stamens. So this is the part I did not prepare because I didn't have time. And I'm going to use squeeze lemonade. And I'm just going to use my finger dabber and color these in. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do both sides. So I'm going to just dab this on, put the color on, and then I'm going to turn it up, turn them over to do the other side. I, I don't know what it is. It's something about the way this soft finish cardstock takes the oxide ink. Ah, I love it. I love it. Right, let's turn this over. There we go. Now, it was really funny. We have really, my garbage can was completely filled up with stuff from crafting. And I've gone through that piece by piece, unfolding pieces of paper, etc., to trying to find that die. It's not there. Uh, I've done a thorough clean of my whole craft room. It's nowhere to be found. I've checked all my magnets that I have put my dies on, whether they're on the back, nope. So, there we go. So, this is quite simple, right? Everybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Then I'm taking, I've got this set. I did a make and take with Anita, well, part of the make and take with Anita at a big fair in the Netherlands, and I bought this one because the tool set I had broke. I don't know what I did to it, but it broke. So um, 
I've got this, but I like it because it's quite small. So I've got this set, it's from Spellbinders. Um, and I, I only need this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this over. Now, you don't have to wet your paper, but I like to. Uh, but what I don't like with the oxides, it's spraying it because then everything gets wet and oxides respond to water. And I don't wanna lose the vibrant, um, uh, vibrancy of it. So what I found out is that if I take a baby wipe and just rub that over the back of the paper, it just softens up the fibers. It just releases enough moisture to soften the fibers and to make it really easy to uh, blend. And the good thing is you can clean your fingers at the same time. <laughs> then what I do, and I'm Guys, this is what I I picked up from Monita. I picked up from other um, I don't know what you mean, Femke. Message me. Um, I picked this up from some people, and I've mixed and matched different techniques. What I do, I go around the pedal, and then I just go like this. But I like that wrinkly effect of the pedal. And I do that to all the pedals. And this is definitely not something that has to take long. But you see how easy you can form these leaves also with this soft finish cardstock. Like this. I really want them to curl up and come to life for me. Oh, that's what I'm doing, just going around. And this is what I did with the leaves and what, with the petals and doing it like this. There we have, now this is, imagine making like a magnolia or something or a tulip, fold it like this and you've got it. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes, this, this video will be on the YouTube channel from Elizabeth Craft Designs and on my own YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. I'm going for 1,500. I'm at 1,250 now, so only 250 to go. And then I will give away a fantastic prize when I reach it. So uh, go for it. And it would really help me out. Okay, that was my shameless plug. So that's that. This is already beautiful, but... But... What I also did, and this is, I saw this from, oh, what was the name? I forgot the name from the lady. The lady that did the live last Friday. Was it Nancy? Um, I've got, I plug, take my tweezers and I just twist this. Take my tweezers and just do that to all these pages. I think I saw that from her. but Or was it Joseph? I can't remember. I saw it from someone and I thought, Let's try that, and I've done that, uh, and it turns out really nice because it gives the flower an even more realistic look. Look at that. And then I just put it back, press it again, and then over here, you can't see that. There's this big magic wall here. I'm gonna put this in my magic oven and I'm gonna bring back a complete flower. So if you do that to all the petals, this is the end result. This is what it looks like. I love it. I was so, I was so chuffed with myself that I made this, me, David, the grungy vintage look, and then I made flowers. Well, okay. I guess if I can learn it, anyone can. Then I'm going to take this side. I don't, I don't know if this is what it's supposed to do, but I found that it worked really well. And I'm going to curl up all these little thingies from the stamens. Just like so. Um, it's from Spellbinders, this tool. And it's pretty cool because you can... Take this one out, and then you can put a bigger one in if you want to uh, switch it out, so that it really works. So, oh, I was using the other side, but anyway. So that's my stamen, that's one. And this is what I'm gonna be doing to all of them. Uh, 
like so. Now I must say they freak me out a bit because they look like spiders and I if I hate one thing it's spiders but I'm trying not to see it. Hi Joseph! So I'm doing it like this. For me this works best and I like that dimensional look and that's why I also colored the background because otherwise it would have been white and I didn't want any white on there. Else, who would have thought that I would be making flowers like this? Not me! <laughs> when I started paper crafting in September last year, I said, Ah, no, paper flowers, that's not my thing. I'm not going to do that. Here I am, making them live for you guys. Right, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to take uh, one piece and I'm going to put some glue on the other one. Because on the big flower, I want them to be combined. I'm going to put a dot of glue on there. And then I'm going to put this in here. Like so. And press. Then I'm going to take my beautiful flower. I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of this stamen and put that in the center. Press it down. Now look at that. How beautiful is that? And I love these double, this double layering of the stamen because it really makes it a full flower. So that one's done. Then I've got of course, I've prepared everything else because I'm not going to let you see me color everything because that's boring, I think. Um, I've already colored the leaves and I did that in the same way. Um, but then one thing is different that when I've done the back, um, I've turned it over and then I've used this tool to make that line in the center uh, to give it more realistic leafy feel. So the leaves are done. And um, with these, I'm going to put in the little stamens, just a single layer. And what I did with these flowers uh, was quite easy. I used the same yellow, so I squeezed lemonade. Oops, come here. Oh, it looks like a spider again. Um, the squeezed lemonade, and then I used whatever what was left on my finger dabber, and I've just colored the outside leaves. Also, again, very simple, very easy to do. Yeah, it's happened. I'm still doing both, though. It's not that I've 100% converted, but... Uh, there we go. And then these little flowers are also done. Beautiful, right? So I'm going to put these here, put them somewhere safe. Get this out of the way. Because I need to get some die cutting done. Put that away. How is my paper doing? Look at that shine. And it's all dry, but it's got that leathery, shiny look to it. Love it. Love it. So, let me get my die set. And I'm going to use that to make the book cover. Like so. Um, get my plates out. And put that through the die cut machine. So, excuse the noise. But isn't that the fun about looking at Facebook Live that you learn all these things? 
I mean, to be honest, that's how I've learned 99% of what I'm doing, just by watching Els and Esther and, and Anita and Marga and other people doing things live on Facebook or on YouTube. That's how we learn. There we go. There's part one. Put this to the side because I'm not going to throw that away. I will be using that to die cut from, to die cut other bits and bobs from. Um, put the die away and then I will take this cover plate and I will cut that out of the panel we made with the alcohol ink. So put that there. Um, I just don't like spiders. Whether they're useful or not, I know they will not kill me. Well, here, they will not kill me, but uh, yeah, no, it's not my... I know it's an irrational uh, fear, but it's just something that's not working for me. Right, now, look at this. This is why I love Elizabeth Craft Designs. The quality is fantastic. Fantastic. The quality of the dice, the quality of the stamps, it never fails me. And that's why I love it. The other day someone asked me, yeah, but there are other brands that have nice stuff. Yes, they do. But the quality of ECD, it's it's what differentiates it for me from others. And it's the same with Tim Holtz. He makes good quality products. Um, and of course, other brands as well. But it's the style. It's, it's like this die. Uh, by doing what I did to it, you make it look a bit more crunchy, so it combines the styles. It's, yeah, oh, well, I just love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she did. Come on, you can do it. There we go. There we go. Now this, I could have done this up front, but I wanted to show you what I did with the alcohol ink, and that's why I didn't do it up front. But now you have to watch me peel out all these little thingies. And of course, when I'm nearly done, I think about that I've got this rolling thing that helps to clean out the... But I always forget about that until I'm done. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So anyone else going to do uh, something fun with Easter? I'm having my mama over for dinner. Any other plans? I know Els will be on the plane. Well, not for Easter, but for the weekend. Anyone else got nice plans? I used the Floral 16 uh, today. The big flowers, I love them. Um, there we go. I think I've got it all. One more here. There's always one, right? There's always one. There we go. And now why didn't I cut this out with the adhesive on the back? I'm such a... It's because I was, well, no, I always forget it. And else here is proof. Look, I've got, oh, <laughs> something stuck. Look at this. This is all my different adhesives. They are right in front of me and I still forget to use them. So, yeah. Anyhow, it turned out well, but I still want to grunge it up a tiny bit more. So I need to get. my sanding paper out. And just lightly, I'm going, going to go over this, to really grunge it up a tiny bit more.
And what this does, it brings out a bit of a silvery shine coming through, and that matches this paper that we made perfectly. Look, isn't that pretty? So, that's going to go on there. Cool, right? Love it. Um, now, I'm always figuring out how should I... Because this is one thing that I was having doubts about. How should this be... Let me fold this. There are fold lines in there, so you cannot go wrong. And this is the only thing that I'm like, okay, should it go this way? I think it should go like this, because then what I can do is I can hook it. Yeah, that's how I should do it. I think I figured it out. I think. I think. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. I think it should go like this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now the other part I've already cut out, uh, and I've put I've put adhesive uh, backing on here, uh, so that's good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the release sheet from these little parts here first, while I'm going to look at your ah, we're going to go gourmet as well. Ooh, that hurts, breaking your ribs. That's not good. Right, so I'm going to fold these to the inside. I've cut this out of a piece of craft paper. Um, and then I'm going to fold these on the fold lines. Good. Thank you, Pam. Yes, I do, Penny, but that's what I meant. I always forget about it until I'm done. Ooh, cool, Else. I'll be watching. I'll be watching. And I'll try to behave. There we go. And so, the, that's how easy you assemble this bookcase. I have a folding bone. I just can't be bothered to use it. Um, I use it when I make cards, um, but um, uh, I'm gonna. I don't want this to be too sharp, and I think if I use a bone folder, it will be quite sharp, and that's not what I want for this. I'm trying to follow your comments. Actually, maybe Anita can shed some light on that. It's a very good question. Where did I put my dice? Now I've lost a complete die set. I just had them. Oh, here. Because I have the same. There's one die in there, this one, that I don't know what it does. So, Anita, maybe you can clarify that for us. So, next, I'm going to put this like this, and I'm going to take off these pieces of release sheet. And then I can easily line it up where I want it. So I can move this around. I can see, line it up with the fold, line the top and the bottom, so equal, like there. It's a fun set to play with. I can say that. Okay, attach it like that. And then, it's quite simple. I peel off this release sheet. And I'm going to fold this down like this. Press it down. And... 
Ta-da! We have our bookcase. Fantastic. Easy to make. Love it. Love it. Come on. Now, I'm not sure whether I've done this right now, yes or no, but it's it's on there now, so it has to. Okay, just else don't look, I'm going to use glue. Because I forgot to put my adhesive behind it. So I'm just going to put some little dots of glue on there. But I love how this cover turned out. Just a few drops. I mean, it doesn't have to hold a lot. I'm curious else about the life from your new house. And I'm curious about what you're going to do Monday. What are you going to make? Well, I guess you'll surprise us. You didn't have time yet to prepare. There we go. That should do the trick. Just some glue dots. But yeah, release sheet would have been over the adhesive would have been a lot easier and a lot quicker. But okay. That's me. I forget that. Okay. Now I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to hover over this because I want this on there as straight as I can. Now, I must say that's a benefit of using glue because you've got some wiggle time. Oh, of course you're in charge, Jonah. It's center, okay. I'll have to play around with that. Well, I'm not hinting anything on the new release. That's not up to me. Right, so this is already a very beautiful book cover, right? At least I think so. I love it. I love how it turned out, but I'm not done yet. So what I've got is um, I've got some Easter eggs. I've got this part. This is cut out of the, uh, the die set as well. It's part of the book set. So I've cut out the panel and I've got out the letters from the other set. I've already made that. Colored the back layer with the squeezed lemonade. So all the colors come back. And now it's time to assemble our box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the big flower. I'm going to put that on there. Like so. Just pop it on there. Hold it down. Give that glue a second to adhere. Then I'm going to take my flower, my uh, petals. I'm going to put my big petal down here. And I'm just going to put uh, some glue on the top of the, or the bottom. Depends how you look at it. I want this to be like this. And another one. Just put some glue on there and stick it in there. Like that's that. And I'll do the same on this side. So it's like building a bouquet of flowers, right? And this set is so easy to work with. Gotta love it. Who would have thought that I would do this, right? Okay, small flowers. I'm just going to put them on there. Just a bit like here, like that. And here's a hole, so I will put one there because it fits. Look. Easy peasy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as they say. Right. Just give that some some time to adhere. Then I'm going to look release sheet or um, well, there's a release sheet as well. 
Um, Double-sided adhesive. Sometimes I can do it. Um, this one is going right smack down here in the middle. Boop. Like so. And then I've got the little Easter eggs. And what I did with the Easter eggs, I've also uh, turned them around and give them, gave them some dimension. Um, and then I put some double, some foam tape in there, some thicker foam tape. So it keeps the dimension as well. And then I'm going to put that right. I'm going to put the Easter eggs on there as well, because, well, it's Easter, right? So peel this sheet off. This one is going to go right there. And I just like these little eggs with some dimension as well. This one is going to go right here. Absolutely, for Christmas, endless. Look at this. Isn't this a beautiful, beautiful book? Yep, it's for my mom. So, but of course, there needs to be something in there. Um, and I'm going to do that next. I was looking at the time. We still have some time, so I will continue to make the menu. And I've got that prepared, of course. So I'm just going to dump everything out. Love these little pizza boxes. So what I've got is a little card here. I think it's three inches by four inches. Is it? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, three. Well, no. Two and three quarters by four inches. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a stencil. Now, I had my stencil here. Here it is. I'm going to take this Elizabeth Craft Design stencil as well. This is from the Art Journal collection. And I'm going to take my Distress Oxide. I'm going to load up my brush. And I'll do it here. I'll clean this off. And very, with a very light touch, I'm just with circular motions coming over that stencil towards the center. Not covering it all. There we go. Pretty, right? And then I'm going to do the same on here. Something like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just quickly giving this background some color. Cleaning up my station because, well, clean service is nice. Then what I do, I don't like these really harsh lines, so I'm very lightly again going to come over this bit here and here as well. So that's going to soften up the lines, fill in the lines a bit with blue. Uh, and also I'm going to go over the, the rest of the paper, softening it all up a bit. And this is really my favorite color. Uh, salvage patina. Love it. It really is. I've used salvage patina as well to make these little flowers. To color them. And then the centers are colored with uh, squeezed lemonade. And again, I did give these little petite flowers some dimension. Uh, only two. Femke. And to be honest, I've already made one. I'll show you in a minute. Um, because I like to be prepared. Now, then here I've got the menu, which is very simple. It's going to be shrimp cocktail. We're going to have gourmet deluxe. I don't know what it is in, in, in English. Um, well, this is my hand. This is the inside of the box. And it's, yeah, quite big. I just want to give this a bit of color as well. So I don't like the stark white. This is just printed with my printer. So nothing fancy, schmancy. Just printed on a piece of paper. There we go. 
Simple as that. So time to build this up. Now I'm going to take some, um, where is it? Yeah. I'm going to take some foam tape, put that on the back to give it some dimension because we can give it some dimension because this box has enough depth uh, to do that. So that's that. And then I'm going to take another piece and trim that in half. Put that here. So tiny bit too big. There we go. Peel off the release sheet. Look, Jonah, I've got my tweezers. Ah, uh, Johan. Sorry, my brain was dead. I finally got your comment now. Here is your smile, your little smile. Yes, I can make that now, but I didn't have that in yet. That only arrived today. So there we go. Put that on there. There we go. That's going to be there. And then what did I think about? What did I do? Just sneak. Oh, yes, I remember now. So I've colored the eggs using the same color scheme as I did on the front. Um, got some foam tape on the back. So it keeps the dimension. It does fit. Yeah, that's why I chose it. Uh, I will be making a lot of books for myself. So for Easter, I'm only making uh, one for my mom and one for her husband. Um, because, well, um, I don't I don't need to have a menu. I know I'm cooking. I'm making the dinner. So, uh, yeah. Well, Daniel's making part of it as well, to be honest. Uh, okay. The little yellow egg on there. And then look at her. The little Easter bunny, I think she's so cute, or he, whatever, but she's pink, so I think it's she. Let the ears overlap with the text here. And then, last but not least, I'm going to put these little flowers on there. Tiramisu, oh, I love tiramisu. One's going there. And these little flowers are so fun as well. And these are now on offer, 20% off all of your sets, dice. So if you want, if you wanted to get some of the dice, but you were in doubt, now's the time. Go and get them. There we go. Uh, fairly what it is, is like, um, yeah, you just cook your own meat on a hot plate on the table. It's like a fondue, but not in oil, but on a hot plate. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Right, look. Fun little menu card that's going in my book box. So when they open it up, they see the menu. Now, of course, I need to put some sweets in there. So there we go. Some Easter eggs, because it's fun. And I color coordinated that. You see it? There we go. Love it. Right. So that's the book box menu card completed. So it's another way of making a menu. I think it's brilliant having this on the plate. Now, I promised to show you the one that I made before. And... Um, it's similar. It's similar, but with different letters. But uh, else and myself felt that the menu was too big. The, the, the letters were too bulky. And so that's why I changed it around to this one. But then again, this is for the husband. This is for my mom. But yeah, this is actually the one that we made today together. Love this. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me close up my glue. And I will just give you a close up of this beautiful look at that 
I love how this turned out. Love, love, love it. Well, guys, this was it for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, I really, really uh, appreciate you spending your Friday evening with me. So thank you all for watching. Uh, have a fantastic Easter weekend. And uh, I hope to see you soon again on my own channel or here at Elizabeth Craft Designs. Thank you for watching. Have fun crafting over the weekend. And I love to see you soon again. Thank you. Bye.